starts to sway and then you're... That's what I mean. It's moving all over the place. I'd like to call to order the council meeting for the month of March. Mayor and City Council of Tawnytown. Ask Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Foster to lady send the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. First order of business we have tonight is the approval of the minutes for February the 3rd and February the 8th. Regular meetings on February 27th, Marin City Council work session or retreat, AKA retreat. Anyone care to make a motion to approve one or all sets of those minutes? So moved. Your second. Second. Is this for all sets? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Post like sign, so carry. Next, we have a um, statement that I need to ask everybody if the, anybody has any conflicts of interest or needs to be recused, recused from anything. Recused. Recused from anything on the agenda tonight. Anybody have any issues with the agenda? No, sir. All right, moving forward. We have resolutions, ordinances, and agreements for introduction. Tonight we have annexation resolution 2016-001A, the Bollinger Park annexation. Anyone care to make a motion to uh, introduce that resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion or questions on that? Yeah, the only thing on that, I, I talked to... Uh, I mentioned it to one of the members of the astronomical group. Man, he's tinkle pink. He said, as soon as we get a, a concrete slab, we're ready to build. Wonderful. So. Good news. I wish it were that simple. Well, <laughs> they're ready. It, it's, you know, they're still interested and ready to go with it. Awesome. Good, good. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Post like sign. Next, we have Charter Resolution CR 201601. Uh, this is the Charter Resolution that allows us to remove elected, fish, elected official from office for various reasons. Anyone care to make a motion to introduce this Charter Resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, so carry. Next we have Ordinance 21-2016, Cannabis Dispensary Overlay Zone. This is to restrict the uh, distribution of cannabis in the city limits if and when that ever becomes legal. Does anyone care to make a motion for that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. No carry. Next we have ordinance 22-2016, code of conduct. Just in other words, an ordinance outlining the code of conduct that um, we are to abide by as council people. Is there anyone care to make a motion to introduce 22-2016? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing nothing, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. So carried. Now up for adoption tonight, we have ordinance 2016, 2020, 2016, campaign finance. Anyone care to make a motion for the campaign finance ordinance? So, so moved. Your second. Second. Is there any discussion? I would like to mention um, some concerns I still have about this. Um, this has been introduced and discussed at several meetings uh, so far. A couple things that are not fixed in this before we act on it are that um, the waiver that I intended to introduce or amend 
this um, that would exempt people from spending, uh, filing all the reports in the document only applies to self-financed people, not to everyone. And uh, my reason for bringing that up in past meetings was that uh, it would be an encumbrance to people that want to file to uh, have to do all this paperwork if you're a low budget campaign that the average campaign would have to spend about a thousand dollars and then Diane had mentioned that amendment to from the original draft to five hundred dollars which I was pretty happy with but it's just for self-financing people my attention like I said back in 1994 when I ran for House of Delegates was that if you spent under a certain amount of money you didn't have to uh, uh, file reports or have a treasurer because you signed a waiver. So that hasn't been repaired in the version that's up for adoption today. The other thing is um, we talked about this in all the discussions in the workshop, Mr. Mayor, as uh, something that would just be about reporting. But actually this um, ordinance does limit um, your ability to uh, contribute or of an entity to contribute. For example, there's a limit in the amount that you can contribute in an election cycle. Now, I had brought to several meetings copies of the Citizen United court decision that says that speech is related in that nonprofit organization <coughs> to the ability to spend money on a cause you believe in. And so when, if you go forward with adopting this, you actually are taking away the freedom of a person to give money to a cause that they believe in and limiting the amount in each election cycle and I think that's unconstitutional. I have, uh, I have because of that court decision, and also have a, a document from uh, uh, Michael Perutka, who's a constitutional lawyer, that talks about how to tell whether something is constitutional or not constitutional. And there are 10 questions that they ask at the Anne Arundel County Council whether or not something is constitutional or not. Does the legislation uh, follow the Constitution? Does it follow the Maryland state constitution? Does it follow the uh, charter, uh, is the legislation based on American uh, legal standards? Does the legislation negatively impact citizens' rights? I would argue on number five that it definitely does. In the Four years ago in the election, uh, there was a candidate running, Joe Vigliotti, and I believed in him. And I went up to the post office and bought 23 rolls of stamps and sent out a letter to every Republican in town. And um, that cost, you can figure out what a roll of stamps cost. And that would be illegal if you passed this tonight for me to do that. I, I was free where I could do what I want to speak. But now if you pass this, I cannot do that. I either have to do it, not do it, and comply with the ordinance that I think is unconstitutional, or I can just give the money to a bunch of different people and we can all go together, which is just essentially a form of deception. So I'd have to take the, mo the money and have you buy a certain number of old stamps, and you buy a certain number of old stamps, and you buy a certain number of old stamps. Or I just lose the freedom to speak. I can't mail a letter to every Republican or every Democrat or in every Independent. I think that's unconstitutional. I don't think you can say that. I don't think you can say that I can't speak, mail a letter out, and, uh, or print a sign. And well, put it I, out. I, I don't know. I'm certainly not a lawyer, but the city does employ a lawyer, and our, uh, the oil lawyer has been responsible for drawing up this document and making sure it meets constitutional muster as well as other legal musters and I, I would have to rely on his judgment since since he's the one we're paying to give us that advice. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a couple more. It says, what, uh, what date was uh, legislation first presented to the group and uh, how much time has been given to review the constitutionality of it? Are the terms of, of, of the legislation succinct with other ordinances? If the legislation requires a um, some sort of vetting process, how has that been done? And secondly, uh, la secondly uh, to the last, if the funds, uh, are there funds uh, received or generated uh, associated with such an ordinance and does the implementation of the legislature require the expenditure by the taxpayer? Those are 10 questions they asked Anne Arundel County Council and I think they're good questions about this ordinance. I would like to propose that um, we have a little more time. I'd like to send this copy of this ordinance to a, a constitutional lawyer and get them to review the constitutionality of that based on my objection 
from Citizens United that restricting the ability, for example, to buy 20 rolls of stamps is really for, uh, restricting my ability to speak. And uh, that might be a uh, infringement on my constitutional rights under the Citizens United case. So I would suggest that we uh, delay implementation of this tonight until I could do such a thing and have a, um, some time to do that. And then I would ask the council to consider that this is just not about reporting to the Ethics Commission who did what. It really does restrict ability of people to, to speak by spending money. And we we have to deal with the motion on the floor, and that is to uh, uh, motion moved and seconded to approve the uh, finance, campaign finance well, reform. I make if amend it, amendment. If it fails, we can, we can do something else, but uh, that would require a motion well, there's Based a motion on, on what the you floor. floor. I think we had a motion in second. I would make a motion that we amend uh, that motion to, to give me the time to go to Michael Perutka and get a, a, a vetting of these uh, 10 things so we could come back and discuss them, whether or not the concerns I've raised over multiple months really are truly constitutional concerns. Mr. Mayor, may I speak? Sure. Thank you. Councilman Frazier, I would understand what you're saying, except that what we're doing is not trailblazing. I mean, this is already done in other municipalities. It's done at the state level. It's done at the federal level. There are restrictions on spending, and there well, are there reasons for been, that. There haven't been any in Tony Town. I understand. But if you're going to say that because we do it, it's not constitutional, whereas for the state, it's okay. For the federal, it's okay. But because we are, it's not constitutional. The fact that there's already a precedent there that has been proven that it's not in violation of the Constitution renders your argument completely incorrect. I'd encourage you to read the Citizens United decision. The Citizens United was a nonprofit organization that gave money and they were uh, challenged uh, by the Federal Election Committee for violating the provisions you're discussing, discussing and they were overruled by the Supreme Court on a vote of five to four uh, to say that the expenditure of money is actually speech and if you restrict our ability to do that, I just want the people that live in this town to realize that if you pass this ordinance tonight in this form, you won't be able to do what I did. You won't be able to go and buy rolls of stamps and send out your own mailers. You might not be able to paint your signs like one of the, like the Tony Town citizens did if it exceeds certain limits and requirements. It's Tomorrow, been presented and presented in the press as though this is just about reporting who spent what money. Mr. Mayor, but that's not what's being enacted tonight. It's come up for adoption tonight, so it needs to be spoken and, that and, we really and, are restricting people's ability to um, to spend money. In, in my reading of the ordinance, it just promotes transparency. It doesn't restrict any that's amount what of money said. But whatsoever to be spent. Well, let me just as long as you. it's reported, it doesn't. You can spend as much as you want. That, no, that's not true. No, no, no it, I, that's not true. Let me read the language to you, Mr. Mayor. It's right in here. It says here that in election cycle, you can only spend. An individual can spend so much, and I think um, maybe if someone else can help me, I'm sure you've gone over it and over it. Well, it, I I, there are limits on contributions from yeah. individuals. Yeah, yeah. What is that limit? It's five hundred dollars, isn't it? That is five hundred. Well, that, well, that's that's true for the federal election law too. Right. It's never been true here. I gave, uh, I, in, in that, I gave an in-kind contribution of uh, what's twenty-three rolls of stamps. I, four years ago, who 11, knows what that was? Eleven hundred dollars, maybe, maybe. You, so that would be illegal, uh, Mr. Wance. In did you cycle? did you contribute the stamps to the candidate? Did you give them to the candidate, or did you mail them? Yeah, we uh, we just mailed them. But, right. But okay. This is so a, that's that's, that's where this is different. You did not contribute that money or that value property to the candidate. You had it for yourself to promote the candidate. At that point, you would be considered a political action committee. You have spent over two hundred and fifty dollars, which would mean you would have to report that that you spent it. But as far as I see, there's no limit to what a political action committee can do financially. As long as you report it. As long as you report it, if it's yeah, over two hundred and fifty dollars. That, that's the bottom line. It's the reporting that, 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 that creates the transparency. There's no. a difference between contributing to a candidate or supporting a candidate. There's a difference there. And what you're talking about is supporting or promoting a candidate. That's the big difference here. 
Now, I would like to offer an amendment to this, if I could. Well, I offered an amendment. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, then. We've, we've got, the adoption uh, uh, we've got an Michael. amendment that's, that's on the floor but lacks a second. Would anyone care to second Councilman Frazier's amendment to send this to a constitutional review committee? He'll do this with that, no charge, and he's offered that to us, and I'd like to have that before we vote on it. So that's my would any, amendment. Would anyone care to second that? Hearing nothing, the motion dies with lack of second. Now, you, you had a motion that you'd like to. I would like to offer an amendment in regard to cash contributions being increased from $25 to $100. My reasoning is regardless of the amount, it would still have to be reported. So I don't believe $100 is unfair to allow. And I'll second that. I said I would the other day. <laughs> Discussion? I have a problem with that. <clears throat> to me, a $25 donation, uh, maybe even a $100 donation, will not buy anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, a family of four or five, each one making a $25 donation, probably won't buy anybody if you stay with 25. You increase it to 100, you get four or five people in a family donating 100 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking money. That's my concern with raising that number. And if I remember correctly, uh, the state limit, I think Jay said was 50, and we were half of it, or the county limit is 50, and we're half of it. And the point was that we are below you know, the, the entities above us. And I have a concern about getting into real money when you, uh, if you bring that up to 100. Even yeah. though it still has to be reported? Yep. Okay. Any um, further discussion on that oh, yeah. amendment? I have one more thing I'd like to mention. Uh, this, you, this uh, you were, you had a motion? Yes. Been second? Oh, that's correct. It has been seconded, yes. And we're, we're still discussing, and I asked okay. if there's anybody discussing. else have any discussion on Brad's oh, motion. Brad's and I spoke up. Yes. The reason that that's a good number is because of the story I told, if you listened to me before, and that is that $25 is not a denomination in the United States currency, and people often make a donation of an amount that is uh, something they'll have in their wallet. And I've had that happen before in past campaigns. So I thought that was reasonable and practical. It would be uh, awkward to say that you cannot take that because it can only be $25. I just think it's not practical. I talked since the very beginning of discussing this about how much it costs to run for office and how much other campaigns had spent. And uh, things are more expensive than they were in 1994. And I think Brad's motion to amend this is a good one. And you should, we should be able to get a unanimous vote on that. All right. Is there any other discussion on Brad's motion, Councilman Wench's motion? All right, we're voting on the amendment to increase from 25 to $100 the amount of cash contribution an individual can make. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. 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 I think it was three to... It failed. It failed. It failed. Thank you. All right, now we have a motion on the floor to uh, pass the campaign fine re finance resolution. All in favor say aye. Well, I'd like to mention one more thing before we vote, if that's all right, Mr. Mayor. One more item here. There's another all right. one. Uh, this ordinance uses a number of definitions that, uh, that um, like, for example, the definition of a candidate, a definition, for example, like uh, uh, Councilman Wance just said, of an of a individual or a committee. And um, there's no um, glossary of terms. Uh, what their definitions are. And since we've referred to other states and jurisdictions that do that, I'd like to make a motion that we add uh, a simple sentence to this before we adopt it, if uh, that's the choice of the council, that we use recognized state definitions for these terms, the term of a, a committee or the term of an individual or a term of a campaign. So um, there are... Uh, standard definitions that have been debated in the county and state and federal elections. And I would like to adopt a uh, 
inclusion in this that we use that glossary of terms that the state uses for defining these terms because we went through that thing with uh, Bill Clinton where he says, well, you know, it, it, what's, it all depends what the definition of is is. So when you fight about things like that, it's always about definitions, but if we agree with the state on those terms, then I think that we will not have those sorts of arguments in the future. So I'd like a sense of the council on whether or not we I would care that. to second that motion. An amendment. Yeah, I'll second that one. To use the state definitions for like what is a political. Well, it's been moved and seconded that we use state definitions to define the various categories outlined in the audience. Any further discussion? I vote on the amendment now. I have not seen, you know, specific state definitions about, you know, pertaining to this particular ordinance. I wouldn't feel comfortable voting for something like that because I haven't, you know, read those particular definitions. This always can be amended at a future date. If That's you, correct. If you want to do that. The way I look at it, if there are standard definitions, are. then mm -hmm. we ought to stay with the standard. Not. They're pretty well established. Not make up something else, okay? Yeah. Right. If there's a conflict with the standard. Uh, that could be a problem if you have a conflict between county and state. But that's something we'd have to work out. I think it's pretty well but I believe as long as we have a standardized definition, uh, I can I go along with that. Fair enough. So, so is the motion to follow just out county of simple or state or county and state? I would just say the state definitions. The state. Right. All right. Let's make let's yeah, revise let's that make motion. Two. Is that okay for the second? the state yes. all right any further discussion on, on the on the amendment to use state definitions to define the categories in the ordinance all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed like sign so carry it all right now i'll call for the vote on the ordinance itself all those in favor of passing the campaign finance ordinance please say aye aye, aye. and oppose like sign no i no on that right. i won't be as free now that you've passed that all right, passes four to one. But you'll be transparent. No, no, I just won't be able to go to the post office and buy those anyway, roses pants. <laughs> next, we have resolution 2016-21, support of the Maryland Municipal League priority for restoring highway user revenues. And we encourage to make a motion to support the Maryland Municipal League's effort to restore our highway user revenue fund. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Did we, uh, did we add the line about the encumbrance that it'll place upon citizens if the funds are not restored? I don't believe so. Could, I don't think we did. I think I, th this, the intent of this is just to show unified support among municipalities that MML's effort is headed in the right direction. I'm afraid if we add anything or take anything away, it'll lose its effectiveness. That's all. All right. I think what we decided to do is to make sure our legislative representative has a, an updated law, one that even takes into consideration getting back money uh, into the law, which, as Jim explained, it's too late for us to do it now, so right. we'll worry. We'll, Hit him next year. Just, just put as that a, on his show. I was going to say we'll remind him. Right. J just as a sideline, I, I trust most of you receive Senator Reedy's email each week, yes. and I responded to his email about highway user revenues and clearly restated our position to have these fire highway user revenues restored to a formula that was been in effect for almost 90 years. So uh, that's that that. There's one effort that we've that I've made directly to Senator Reed. So. Can I ask a follow-up question on that? Sure. Um, I had heard, and I'm not certain what the bill number is, that there was a proposal before the uh, the legislature to fully restore them all in this budget year to 100 percent. But the MML is backing a proposal to do it over multiple years. Do we have information whether or not there's another bill uh, that, that we might be careful not to adopt their but one bite at the apple, but actually advocate a, since it's a 90 year precedent as you described it, shouldn't we be fully restored in those highway user funds all at once? Well, that, that, that's the intent of this legislation, but it doesn't restore it in the first year. 
It restores it over like three or four years. Several the I don't told. recall that bill. I mean, I'm on the legislative committee and we review any bill that affects municipalities. Now, if it were, if that were discussed, I'm sure I would have discussed it, but I don't recall it. And Jane P. Pizza, the new fellow that's representing, I can't remember his name, yes, MML. Uh, I asked him that question. He was sitting across from me. And he said that the MML doesn't only want to back what's right, but they want to back what will pass. <laughs> well, there's a certain strategy involved there. <laughs> That's right. I would stand for what's right. But the, 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 the notion is that uh, uh, the MML legislation has support from both sides of the aisles, and anything other than that could, could jeopardize the the progress that has been made to date. Right now, the uh, governor has been very generous in helping restore funds, but it's it's based on kind of a paternalistic policy. Whatever he feels like giving us, that's what we get. So that's why we need to define it as a uh, as a formula that, that results in uh, a certain amount of Justin income per year. Saturday. Saturday morning at the legislative breakfast that uh, there was quite a financial mess in, left from the last administration and it's taken two budget years to get out of the hole almost a billion dollars of trouble and so the governor probably knows how much can he afford the first year right because it is a very difficult time digging wow. out of the big I hole that was dug by Martin O'Malley. It, he's, he's been very eager to uh, underscore his efforts among all jurisdictions and not just particular jurisdictions that benefit That's from efficient. light rail or metro or mass transit, but, but all jurisdictions. So I think, again, I recommend that we, we offer our support to this. It's not perfect, but legislation says is not usually perfect when it, when it passes. It's, you've just got to kind of Take a step at a time. And right back used to say two things you don't want to see made. Or first one is sausage, and the other one is legislation. So <laughs> makes sense. So all in favor of resolution 2016-21, say aye. Aye. Those like signs. So carry. Next we have resolution 2016-20, the water allocation for March, and this is the. Uh, monthly uh, water allocation resolution that we pass each month, but this time it's particular for March. So does anyone care to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. No carry. Next up for approval is the cable franchise agreement. Uh, we've talked about this since January. I attended a Carroll Regulatory Commission meeting last week uh, where the um, franchise again was reviewed and it was the consensus of those present that it was good in its uh, current form. Marion Ware was there and made remarks uh, similar to that. And I recommend we uh, pass the cable franchise agreement. The, the uh, commission uh, also um, voted to um, postpone the final approval from the county level until June. Um, it was supposed to be approved in April, but they, they moved to uh, delay that proposal to, just so that they could study it a little further, but uh, um, again, I recommend we, we approve it. So would someone care to make a motion to approve the cable franchise agreement? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If, if the county doesn't want to approve it now, uh, <clears throat> if we approve it, does that take away some little bit of power away from the county because well, you know now they can argue that they, well they, 
Tiny uh, they, encouraged they encouraged us to approve it. What they're interested in is, is addressing some technicalities. They didn't have any, any concern with the meat of the franchise. And um, I suppose if we didn't approve it, 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 it wouldn't do us any harm. We've got until June to act on it, but I don't know what it will accomplish either. I mean, it, was, it, it's, uh, it needs approval from all eight municipalities, and uh, any, anyone that holds back is, would hold up the franchise. And, um, well, I guess if it is modified, then it would have to come back for approval. It would approval have to come again. back for approval. So, Correct. Okay. I think in its form, it's, it's appropriate for the city. There, there's nothing that stands out to myself in regards to what's in it now. So. I, I, I was very skeptical, as you know, from the beginning. And I don't, I, after I read it, there's, some, you know, there's not everything I like about it, but there's, there's nothing that I, that, that's a showstopper, right. in my opinion. Okay. One of the things that concerned me was that I don't know what they call it, but some division of the channel so that only the people in Tawny Town would have access to the media center's recording of the Tawny Town meetings. And now, you know, they have any city has access in the county. Right. And we have access to others, too. Well, and that just translates to what's showing up on their televisions. Yes, is that right. whatever comes to Tawny Town proper would be Tawny Town related news. It doesn't stop them from viewing it online or anything. No, but right now they couldn't go to the, that channel and see. You know, you won't get the Mans or the Manchester's or I think, whatever. I think that was really directed towards live broadcasting because one of the problems that they have is uh, some of us have meetings on the same night. So that the recordings that they they still all be recorded. So you could still go to the meeting. Will they center. still be on for access? Right. right. That that but, that's correct. It was it was streaming that they were concerned with, I think. And even so, there's infrastructure that have to be in place in order for them to do that. So it's not like when this gets approved, like a switch is gonna happen. There's a fair amount of infrastructure they have to do to make that happen. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. So carried. Next we have the city manager's report. Henry, do you have anything additional for us tonight? Nothing additional. Any questions for Henry? Any questions on the departmental reports? Our barrister is not with us this evening, but if we have any questions for about the legal report, I'm sure we can make note and he will respond to us next meeting. Any questions on the legal report? Let's move on to unfinished business. Um, we have the issue of um, changing the street sweeping schedule on West Baltimore Street. Does anyone care to make any kind of motion or effort to uh, change the street sweeping schedule on West Baltimore Street or any other street? Can you remind us what, um, uh, if you, if you recall a resident from West Baltimore was concerned that the street sweeping um, schedule on the third Monday began at 5.30 and ended at 11 or something and she felt that was too long and but didn't she come last week and say they didn't want to cancel the street sweeping can you remind me of that i'm not recall, i'm not sure that i don't know what i don't think that was said unless i missed it no i i think her her issue is it's not that she doesn't want to stop the street sweeping it's not that she wants to change the schedule she doesn't want that property swept at all she wants all of our parking signs that we have down down at that end to be taken down. Have you done any research with other residents? She um, mentioned five or six people affected directly, um, as I recall her comments. 
Well, that, that, I think that was the issue. I, I, she said she was representing her neighbors, but I'm not sure any neighbors. Was, any, was anybody here to speak on the street sweeping? Let's sweep. Okay. I thought, weren't you working with her to come up with the solution? I did. I talked to her about scheduling different times or different hours, but that doesn't seem to be the goal that she wants to accomplish. So but it's, she just wants to eliminate street sweeping. Just, just in that section there. We save ten cents if we don't do it. <laughs> I don't think you save anything. Well, they, you know, they, the, the the issue becomes if uh, if we cordon off certain sections of the streets to be swept or not swept, not only does it get confusing, but it defeats the purpose of sweeping the sweeping the sweet streets. Great. So. Um, I, I, what I would recommend is that um, before this contract comes up again, we spend some time reviewing this and trying to decide whether indeed we have the right hours or the right uh, limitations on, on when cars can be parked at the particular street. Well, if you recall, we did a very uh, a long study on that right after... Uh, uh, street streetscape. streetscape, yeah, and it involved parking to begin with, if you recall, and it also talked about the street sweeping and the hours because we, we remember we had we had problems with getting a contractor. We bagged the, the uh, signs for a while. Now the problem, the problem, it, you know, you can't changing the time frame isn't really going to be good. Because if we change that, and I think it was talked about to move it to 8 o'clock, well, the problem with that is, is the businesses are open. Yeah. And I'm sure they won't like that. So, and the fact that we, you know, it was reported that the street sweeper was seen going into later hours, that's true. When he gets full, he takes that, that debris that he has collected and takes it down to the park and dumps it in our dumpster. And as he's going along, if he notices that a car that was parked there is moved or gone, he comes back and sweeps over that. So he's sweeping continually as he's going through the city, when he's going back and forth to dump, make the dump. So I don't know if changing the hours would do anything, plus then we'd have to change the ordinance, and then we would have to change the signs. I know that one of her issues was she was concerned about being reminded of the street sweeper when it was coming through too. So maybe, I don't know, is there an alternative way that we could remind citizens that the street sweeper is coming through at specific hours? I mean, I know we put it out on our Facebook now. It's on a web, web page and we put a reminder out for- There's a, there's um, a street sign on the street saying not to. I mean, yeah. that's a reminder every time you pull up that you're not to park there during those times. Um, if we look realistically on Monday mornings, by what I've seen, majority of businesses are not open on Mondays downtown Tawnytown. That's true. They, that's kind of their second weekend day. So I really don't think it's going to have that large of an effect on downtown businesses if it's pushed later. I can think of four off the top of my head that are not open at between 8 and noon on Monday morning. I, I, I think the main issue is that it comes so early and it's before people go to work. If it were after 7.30 or 8, then the majority of the people would be at work and there wouldn't be an issue whether you remembered or you didn't remember. And I, I think that would make a lot of people happy, including me, but... Uh, You're our main revenue source. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the problems, though, is the same thing we have with the trash company in that you'd have to start on that end in the morning and come this way because there's less traffic right. than going eastbound. Yeah, I don't believe so 8 o'clock. you couldn't clean going eastbound at 8 o'clock right. because you'd have it back up from here to Waynesboro. Right. Well, they, 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 in truth, they, the rush hour is, is before 8 o'clock. It, it's during the time they're sweeping now. No, I, I come through at 8 o'clock, and it's 
it's pretty still, packed, it's especially with school buses around. Up till around eight the time. o'clock. Well, school when, buses, yeah, that's yeah. Right. school buses and school. And yeah, that's that's. Uh, I think closer to nine or ten o'clock would be far more appropriate because the downtown has calmed down at that point. Again, businesses, for the most part, are not open Monday mornings here because they're open Saturday. They take their Sunday and Monday off. All right. Cheers to them. And that's, that's true. I think a later morning street sweeping would be appropriate. Well, uh, and I'm fine with that. You know, the, what you have to do then in order to accomplish that is twofold. One, there's an ordinance that's covered on that. The ordinance has to be changed. And then we have to go out and purchase new signs to indicate those times. So those are the two things that need to be done. Right. Well, Henry, why don't you do this for us? Contracts will change too. That, yeah, then there's a contract. Say, it really can't happen until we renew the contract, correct? Well, I'm sure you can when modify the contract. When is the contract, contract up for renewal? I, I don't know off the top of my head. But, what? but we can, clearly we can still modify a contract. Yeah. Why don't we investigate those things? Let's, let's investigate. Number one, is it, does a street cleaner have any major issues with this? Number two, how much of the signs going to cost? And number three, let's pull the ordinance and see what we need to do to change the time with a resolution. Or well, that's ordinance. Yeah, that that's just a change. I mean, it might be just a text amendment. That might not be as complicated. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, bring that back to us. May I address Lieutenant Epsler regarding this? Oh, sure. By changing it to later in the day, does that have any effect on the enforcement by the police department? Is it easier in the morning to do it because there's less? It shouldn't have any effect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, let's revisit that one more time next month. Any other unfinished business? Hearing nothing, let's move into new business. Monthly financial report. Anyone care to make a motion to approve the monthly financial report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussions on the monthly financial report? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Next, we have the accounts payable. We care to make a motion to approve the accounts payable? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the accounts payable? Hearing nothing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. So carry. Next, we have um, the issue of adding a part time person. No. no. Skip number three, sir. Constant yield. Oh. Constant yield. I did that last time. Maybe that's Freudian. <laughs> You're doing it on purpose. Maybe that's Freudian. I want to say about this next item, I want to thank uh, the manager for sending me that document. We got the actual printout of that. And uh, the difference between... Mr. Mayor, the, can we have a motion before wait, we discuss wait, this? No, wait, we, we need to have a motion to thank approve you. the constant yield tax oh. rate. So okay. moved. And a second. <laughs> second. All right. Now there's some time okay. for discussion. I just want to thank the, the city manager for giving me that. Uh, based on my calculations, maybe you could confirm the difference between the uh, the uh, the because of the increase of assessed value and the constant yield, which is the constant yield rate, uh, and the amount that if we leave the rate is the same, is only thirty one thousand dollars more revenue. Is that is my is my math correct on that? Thirty one thousand four hundred and eighty. Pretty much, yes. It's only about thirty one thousand dollars. So the amount. Well, that, you know. Yeah. It's less than a penny on the rate. Yeah. So if we hold the rate the same, uh, we will collect about $31,000 more at the new assessment rate. That's correct. Yeah, I thought that was correct. When you do the math. I was thought the spread would be larger than that. I thought that was surprising. Yeah, the assessments, while they've gone up, they haven't gone up significantly. That 31000 could be the difference between a new position for finance or not, in my opinion. But rates didn't go up everywhere. Right, I understand. In the county, in the city. Right. That's right, the assessment. They, they, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's based on one third mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. assessment. I say the difference is only, what, 
0 .0, 0 0.006 of a cent, I think is what I'm seeing here. Right, and it's, it's very slight. I mean, it's, it's like the first time in eight years, and it's just very slight. Anyone have any other comments? I just think that um, any revenues that, when I made suggestions to bring the water, the sewer rate to be comparable with the water rate on a one-to-one -one basis and stop the injustice of taxing or charging people twice as much for a gallon of sewage as they use in water, uh, I was met with the objection that if you're gonna do anything that, uh, that affects the uh, budget, you have to come up with the money where it comes from. Well, here's money that we could devote to lowering the water bill in town. I don't think this we ought is, to increase is, the size of government. This is the general, general fund. fund. Not, it's not well, utility. I think all, everything's on the table, don't you agree, uh, nope. uh, Mr. Town Manager, or if we have to lower no, the water this bill? No, is, this, is, this is fund one, general fund, not utility fund. I, I, I just would like rather devote the extra revenues to lower the water rate into the into the water sewer fund into the utility fund rather than spending it That's we shouldn't every time we have a little extra money to spend it when we have debt to pay off when we have rates to lower when we have tax relief to provide that's a budget discussion well again they, 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 they the extra revenue the extra revenue is money we're not going to have to borrow well that would be a point of clarity maybe why did you ask for a motion a second to discuss this because we have to decide whether we're going to keep the tax rate the same or increase it or decrease it. And so we're voting on that right now? Yeah. Okay, I, if you're going to just spend it on new growth in government, I'm gonna vote no on that. You can do that. I don't want you to do that. I don't want the council, I'd like to find three people on the council that would devote any extra revenues if we leave right. the number, the well, pennies well, just per hundred dollars. As an example, value the same to be able to example, the issue of water bill. As an example, one penny on the tax rate equals about $50,000. So what we're talking about is about a half a penny. And uh, that that's, what we're, that's how the tax rate would be affected if we decided not to approve the constant yield tax rate. So all those in favor of approving the constant yield tax rate say aye. 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 And opposed. I say no. I think aye. we need to Good. not do that. Increase the aye. size of government. <coughs> all right. It's nothing to do with it. That, that, that's, I would make a motion that we lower it to half a penny. That's where we can do it. My taxes are way too high. I have $1,100. Just, just the municipal portion of my tax bill is $1,100. That's a lot of money. In, in two weeks, we're going to have a discussion on the budget, and we can do anything you want to with that budget. Well, as I'll long say, as you get say then, as long as I'm you get the, the support of council. <laughs> but we're not we can, we're not doing anything. But we've got to be we've got to use this number in order to prepare the budget. That's all. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I think you have a motion on the floor. I we didn't already know, voted. I have what I have a motion for. He already voted on it. We voted on it. No, you, didn't you make a second motion, another motion? No, 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 I just was saying okay. my opinion about uh, what should be done with 31,000 more dollars. When that's what we're coming into budget time, that's what we need to determine. I'll bring it up again and you can trust me on that. <laughs> All right, next is the um, approval of a new position for finance 25 hours a week part-time position to help with the finances and the all financial help the treasurer I guess is there anyone care to make a motion to approve that new position so moved is there a second second all right is there any discussion uh, Henry I have a question for you um, I noticed that in 2014 we had 48 employees in the city and this year we have 44 so I'm just kind of wondering what hiring an additional part-time person would do in terms of, of you know, spending. Well, uh, this person is budgeted at uh, $25,133. And the additional, that would be a, an additional cost of training of another $1,000 for a total cost of 26000 But in the budget, we currently have a a contractor that comes in and works 
uh, doing part of this work as well. And that is uh, 4,680. And we wouldn't need that uh, regular layman to do that work any longer, which the net cost on that would be 21,538. Can I ask a question of the uh, city manager? Uh, how much of the staff of these three people in the office is paid in overtime as opposed to straight time? I don't have that figured in front Do you of me. Have but a sense of it? How much they're paid? Yeah, no. How much is overtime? Well, you have that in your in your report. Yeah, I had seen it. Okay. I was. My impression is that we're not that some people are getting some comp time, as you described in a previous meeting, is, because they work a little overtime, but they make it up in later time off. But they are right. Been able well, to uh, take the days off. I think you reported to the council in a previous meeting. Well, you've got two two type two types of employees down there. You've got hourly, and you have uh, people salary. who are on salary. This position is in the finance portion of of the downstairs. It's not in the water and the sewer building which the other people work at so there's two two separate distinct positions is the salary parts uh the finance part and the hourly part the water and sewer is that what you were trying to say i'm not trying to say that what i'm saying is is that, is that the case though what is the case that the, that the people working in uh, water and sewer staff are hourly, hourly people as that opposed is correct. to our our um, finance finance director. that's correct okay thank you uh, the position we're talking about here is hourly, okay? Uh, the reason I think we really need this, uh, roughly three years ago, <clears throat> when we hired the, exist the present uh, treasurer, uh, we also had a, a contractor working <coughs> to supplement her time while she learned. And when that person left, we uh, never went after anybody else. We now have a secretary that's, or a treasurer that's doing a heck of a job. Our last two budget, our last two uh, audits. audits came through with no problems. But without that person, what's happened is some of the treasurer's work has leaked out to the front office. So now we've got a treasurer who is earning more comp time than she can possibly use that Henry has had to uh, extend a period of time before it's lost. Because the way we do employees, comp time has to be used in a certain period of time. If not, and there's not a good reason for not using it, then it's lost. Henry has had to change that. We can't continue that way. We're paying overtime to the Two employees in the front office were paying considerable overtime, from what I understand, and we're still not able to get the job done. If we continue without this position, they are totally overworked. Performance appraisals, uh, which are used to determine raises, are sometimes not the best because they just don't have enough time to get the job done. If we hire another contractor, when that contractor leaves, they take all the knowledge they got while working here with them. We hire a part-timer, there's going to be knowledge. If and when and, you know, the treasurer leaves, we at least have somebody that can provide a backup, no matter how small or what, but there will be some backup. So I think... You know, over the years, that position has, you know, really expanded. Uh, there's been additional requirements put on it. If you look at the paper we got last week, Wednesday, you can see what's going on in the treasurer's office, what's going on with the two young ladies in the front office. It's a, it's a heck of a workload. I happen to get involved in some of the discussions, and I was surprised. We're asking uh, receptionists to make decisions that should be made at a higher level and will be in the future if we do this. We just can't continue the way we are. That's my feelings. 
Councilman, you also made another good point about the backlog of work that's accumulated on Friday. I, I went around to the annex across the street and here, and, and we literally have rooms of old papers and records and things that haven't been filed because the people in the office just don't have the time to do it because they're scrambling to, to run the city on a day-to-day -day basis as it is. It's my uh, uh, understanding from something you had said earlier in, in a colloquy that uh, that just three years ago we had just one position, is that correct? That's right. And it was a clerk, treasurer as one person? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I thought I thought I heard that. Any other comment? And the reason that job was divided uh, is because of the exact same thing we're at this point in time, is the workload became um, way too much for one person to do two persons' jobs. And... Um, and that is probably why we lost the last treasurer too. And not only that, when you look at the audit reports that we had back then, we did have problems that had to be resolved. And uh, we were late, we needed extensions, and you can't blame the person when they just don't have the time and they're split five, six, seven, ten ways. Uh, any other discussions? I was going to say that before we vote on this, that at the uh, workshop meeting we had uh, on the budget back in the back room that lasted all Saturday, there was a motion to go into executive session to discuss the staff in the office, and it went on for a substantial amount of time. And during that discussion, I was not persuaded that uh, that. Uh, that it might be a good thing to increase the staff in the office because I heard a lot of concerns. I was troubled to hear that the new water billing system doesn't save any staff time at all after spending that money to bring in a new water billing system or not. We're still going to be overburdened with The staff. mechanics of it are still the same regardless. Yeah. So, I, mean, uh, so I am, I'm not persuaded. Well, if there's a... Um, no further discussion. I'd just like to offer my position for the record. I uh, feel that this position is not needed, necessary. I think better efficiencies could be gained with the personnel that we have now. And I don't deny that we're behind or having to generate comp time, but that's the problem. It's not the issue. And I think that, that needs to be addressed before we address additional help. Um, but that's my opinion, and obviously I differ from Councilman Sam Betty on this, but I don't get to vote, and he does, so. Well, I'm going to call for the motion. Two to two and you can vote. <laughs> I'm going to call for the motion. All in favor of approving the position for finance, say aye. 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 And opposed. I'm opposed aye. to that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I heard those discussions about the two and two and three to two. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other new business to come before us today? All right, let's let's move into council member reports. We didn't get a chance to do that Monday night, so let's start with Councilman Vigliotti and see what he has to say. I just want to remind everybody about the inaugural event for Tawny Town for the Arts occurring on Friday evening at 6, 6 p.m. just across the street here at Vintage Colors. A local artist will have all of his art on display and we'll be talking about the, the role that Tawny Town for the Arts will play in engendering culture and arts uh, in Tawny Town. It's a free event. I encourage everybody to come to it. There'll be refreshments uh, and it promises to be an enjoyable evening. Uh, Planning Commission, we met with the um, developers of Meads Crossing and gave them the approval to uh, move ahead on the changes in terms of uh, townhomes versus single family homes as well as getting rid of the alleys behind the homes. So that's moving and once again it'll be a development that does not conform to our um, community village ordinance and there was some brief discussion on maybe we need to revisit that ordinance and change it something that benefits the city instead of something that only works for more urban areas. 
Okay. Diane. Just that uh, Nancy McCormick, uh, myself, and uh, Ms. Prim, who's the chair of the Main Street Committee, will be attending a state Main Street Committee meeting next week. Good. Councilman Frazier. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tomorrow, on the 15th of March, is a great day because the National Park Service is coming to only town to meet with our Parks and Recs Director, uh, Bob Mitchell. And uh, that meeting was going to start at, the, at this building, 17 East Baltimore Street, at 11 o'clock. So anyone wants to come, there's going to be a walking tour of the park and the two annexed adjacent properties. Uh, review of what you said, uh, the, the fellow who runs the auto store, I can't remember his name now. Right. The I can't either. Of astronomy. <laughs> Guy is excited about uh, the development of that property for the astronomy. And I encourage anybody listening or here tonight uh, on, or listening on the video to uh, come out to that meeting at 11 o'clock. They will leave from here and then go there to the, the site to look at the Bollinger Park property, uh, which is an exciting new development. There's plans for pathway and, and development of that property that should encourage everybody who loves the parks and um, and uh, facilities that we provide. And it's really an exciting time to have this. And it would be good to have a number of people show the national folks how much we care about the development of that park. So I encourage folks to come out to that tomorrow if you're free. Wear boots. Angela. <laughs> uh, Friday at the business breakfast, there was a presentation uh, by an organization, a state organization that provides uh, employment services for the disabled. A tremendous program. Uh, just to learn about what they're doing and the types of people they have available. Uh, we're not talking about just the unskilled. There's, even, there's engineers, there's accountants. All people are available, all types of uh, skills. Uh, through that organization. It's called DOORS. I don't remember what it stands for. But uh, there's talent out there, and the state will help. They'll pay for part of the training. It, it's a good program. It looks good. I, I'd just like to say I was very impressed myself. That's a very encouraging program, and it's it's what makes our business breakfast so successful, have programs like that from time, from time to time. I just want to report that, uh, again, uh, legislation is moving through the uh, General Assembly and uh, hope, we'll be hopeful that we have some substantial uh, legislation protecting our highway user revenues uh, come the end of the session. Um, Again, if you have a chance to talk to any of our delegation, please encourage them to support this legislation. I don't think we really have a problem with that up here, but uh, you never never can uh, talk about it enough. A lot of other um, issues legislation-wise that will affect us. There's a number of uh, bills that will affect abandoned and, and derelict properties, which hopefully something will get will get on the books to uh, be able to address uh, some of the issues that we have here in town. And that, uh, that, that is encouraging. One of the things that we fight, have fought for the last uh, number of years is trying to uh, allow for our public notices to be published uh, on the internet or on other types of electronic media rather than exclusively through the newspapers. And of course, the newspaper lobbies are dead set against that. And uh, it looks like that has failed against, once again, it's been about six years in a row that that's been in front of the General Assembly. The, uh, um, opens meetings laws, there's a number of opens meetings laws that will occur and I'm sure that there'll be some kind of uh, opens meeting law that passes. Most of these are, are designed to, again, to provide transparency, something we all in elected office want to include. 
one of the things that uh, it looks like is going to merge as a requirement for all boards and commissions to uh, to participate in open meetings training and it will be able to be done through a two and a half hour computer course so that it's while it's going to cost some money it, it's probably going to happen is what they what they're saying and I think most of our boards and commissions have been trained anyway but uh, there may be some we missed other two other things that I wanted to uh, announce was that uh, uh, Maryland Municipal League Convention is coming up at the end of June and I think you saw some email correspondence on that this morning from MMML so if you haven't already make sure Clara knows your intentions as far as the MML conference goes the um, next thing that happens is the um, economic uh, Carroll County Economic Summit which is something that we've been doing for I think it's 14 years in a row now that uh, is sponsored uh, Dr. Basu comes up and gives us a synopsis on what the economy looks like in Carroll County and and in Maryland in general it's always very informative it's going to be held at the uh, St. John's Portico I thought I wrote down the date but I didn't and I think it's the um, April 5th there you go I have it I have it on my calendar you sent to us all so if anybody yes. would at the would, portico is that the one you sent to us all that's for um, economic development yeah is there a deadline for that um, to come get back to you on that I can let you know when I go downstairs. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I saw that. that yeah, so that, that, that's very interesting. I, I know Angela's been before. I think Diane has too. I, I go, it's, it's, it's a, a morning well spent. It's, it begins with a breakfast at um, 8 o'clock and then um, it's around 7.30 and it's over by 10.30, 11 o'clock. Yeah, he finishes at 10 roughly. Yeah, about 10, yeah. So if, if you're interested in attending that, please notify the office and okay, we'll make sure that you get registered for that. And it's a full house. I mean, they, and it's a full house. Portico. One more thing. Okay. Uh, I did notice today that there's evidence that the county has started working on the new parking lot expansion for the senior center. There was an excavator in uh, Tawnytown High School Park, which if you remember, we gave them permission to dig that up for drainage county truck and excavator was on the property today it looks like that's moving forward and it's a it's a relief for the senior citizens in tawny town to finally get a larger safer good. parking lot that's good news mayor did you did you want to mention nancy's award oh yes i, I certainly do uh, uh i i had the pleasure of accompanying our economic development director to a uh an award ceremony down in severna park that the knights of columbus presented uh, Nancy, a Citizen of the Year award for her efforts in and around Tawny Town, and it's a statewide recognition. So that was a pretty nice, pretty nice uh, feather in her cap and an honor for our town. So, and uh, as they closed, they addressed her as Madam Mayor. So I'm not sure what that. <laughs> meant. But uh, that's all right. It was good anyway. Um, Anyone from the audience care to make any remarks based on the agenda items? Can you come forward, Barbara? Barbara Cook, Club Side Drive. I was disappointed that you uh, acted on, on all of these things before the citizens had a chance to make a comment. Amen to that. I read all of these word for word, code of conduct, removal from office, and com campaign finance. And when I got finished, I had a headache. It seems as though the pendulum here has gone from crazy over to ridiculous, and the pendulum always swings back. 
It's the law of gravity. And so there are two things that bring it back to kind of reality. One is something terrible can happen, like somebody gets shot, or there's humor. So I thought I would offer some humor tonight, if you'll bear with me. And I've tried to include everybody, even the citizens here. So this story, this is a story about a town I once heard about. It is titled, The Overkill of Deadwood. The small town of Deadwood was west of the big cities of the east, west of the east a sleepy place where not much happened. Then the town sheriff and his posse were handed a can of worms. When they looked inside, they had no idea how to use those worms. So they did their best and squashed the contents back inside the can and took a deep breath. Whew. Meantime, an election was coming down the road, same time as the Top popped loose. The citizens caught a whiff of the fumes and asked questions. The upshot was two of the deputies were retired by the voters and replaced by two younger ones. The voters were watching with one eye on each new deputy. One fella came in with his guns in his holster, sat down and looked the place over. Yep, he said, I'll stay. The other fellow came in on a large white stallion, guns blazing, ready to track down the odor. Nobody knew that the bullets were duds. This is supposed to be humorous. Everyone got all upset. The sheriff tried to settle the people down with a small posse of citizens and deputies. It almost worked until the new deputy demanded answers. That blew the lid off and the sheriff called a timeout. He gathered his troops together and they agreed on a result. The young deputy was tired and feathered, put in the town stocks and humiliated. To boot, he was censured. The town was shocked, went calm and quiet, and finally someone spoke up. What does that mean, was asked. It means stop. So the only traffic light in town was put on red. One voter was, who was known as the town sweat blanket stood up and said, you know, people are laughing at us. That was sure to end it all until someone else had a better surefire or fix it. The solution, so that the traffic light could be turned back on. We need to hire one of those back East Philadelphia lawyers to make this final dead and buried in dead wood. And so they did. The lawyer arrived in his shiny black carriage, a black carriage with a pair of silver horses, and he agreed to a permanent fix. He got all the particulars down on paper. The sheriff and his posse all nodded and smiled. This was the finale, or was it? All this white paper soon created a storm, and the storm became a blizzard. All of Deadwood was buried. It got very quiet. And then something happened. Do you recall the two deputies that got voted out or retired? One raised his head and came forward. Sheriff, he said, this is Deadwood, a small, quiet town. We are west of the east. We are west of those big west eastern cities. We are still civilized. It seems to me we could get all this down on one piece of paper in simple, clear words. You know, it's strange how getting out of the woods and some distance gives a person a new picture. The wise sheriff nodded his head and thought, this could take a second look. The deputy said, I call all this stuff the overkill, the overkill of dead wood. So how does this story end? It is not yet written. 
Maybe it is time to change the red traffic light to yellow. Caution, go slow, and look in all directions. That's my version of humor. Well, Mrs. Thank Cook, you, Barbara. Uh, good news is this. And it was humorous. Just a re little response. These things that were uh, talked about today, the removal, which is a charter amendment, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the two ordinances below it, uh, they were just introduced. They weren't enacted today. That's so all right. More times to come. We're, on we're, that. There will be much. There will <laughs> be much is, discussion to come on all of this. Right. This okay. is just a little humor, folks. Okay. okay. Well, well, again, don't, 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 to you. <laughs> don't give up ship. There'll be much, to, not much discussion to come. Anyone else care to make a comment? Hearing nothing, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. Oh. I hate for everybody else. Thank you. Well, <laughs> comment on the docket. The docket, the court docket? Yes. Catherine Adelaide, 9 Cortland Street. Barbara, I got it. I thought it was hilarious and right on point in so many areas. Um, yeah, I agree. The, I do think it's too bad. It seems like things wrapped up around 8.30 and the docket goes till 9.30. So that was a good hour that, you know, citizens could have had a little bit more input into. Um, I think citizens are so important in the process that whenever they show up, whether it's Wednesday or Monday, there ought to be time for them to, especially on um, things that are open for adoption. I think I mentioned that on Wednesday. So I didn't even think we were going to be able to speak at all. I'm glad that we're able to do that. I just didn't see anything even at the end. but. It seems like things went through pretty quickly, but again, my concern would be um, allowing citizens to speak, because some people, you know, can make it on Wednesday, which might be the more important session because it's a work session, but some can make it Monday, some can make it both. Um, I always, since you guys are jumping on the transparency bandwagon and nobody's attempted to put up the magnifying glass more than Councilman Fraser on being transparent, I would think that, you know, we'd want to keep offering citizens opportunities on Wednesday and Monday, but especially before an adoption of an ordinance or a resolution, just to get, because again, it's Wednesday, there's been a weekend, you know, a lot of things can happen, and to have that last bit of input, you might get a little more information before you're actually voting. I don't think it would take that much time. There was only three of them here. I'm glad to hear there'll be more um, discussion about the introduction, so. Um, I do think the, the campaign finance, my overview of it is um, that it's the overall impact. I think you want to look at it as it is encouraging more people to run for office. And I hear the transparency issue, but we also want to encourage more people to run for office. We want to encourage more people to participate. And so you do have to really balance out um, how oppressive some of this legislation is starting to look, especially since none of it occurred before Councilman Frazier came on board. It, it looks a little suspicious, but um, that it all of a sudden showed up after that. And like I said, had all this happened before, um, I think some things might have been different during the last election when, you know, in my opinion, the city uh, sources were used to counter a rival. So I, I, we actually probably need to close up that loophole at some point. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anyone else excuse me. Make a, uh, Could you please give me an example of city resources used? Sir, you know, I, you I, stand up there and you I keep, would, you ask you keep me? telling us things. Okay. okay, let's have some yes. information. Councilman Wance, before he was a councilman, challenged an ethics application on, count, on arrival. At that point, they were rivals. It went through the Ethics Commission, and Councilman Frazier was, it was resolved as nothing unethical had been done. And then, on a Friday, the proper venue was to go to the Circuit Court, not the Board of uh, Elections. What and makes he, you feel no, that's the proper venue? I believe you're incorrect with that. What if you actually this? read the city charter, you'll see what the proper venue is. It's defined in there as the circuit court. And the, the lawyer- The Board of Elections has final say on who is on the ballot. 
that is the appropriate place for that to have gone. You have no, continued to make that. false accusations regarding that. You are mistaken. It was handled appropriately. The city attorney even oversaw that. No, the city attorney agreed with me standing out there that he got caught off guard and he wanted to make sure that um, this, the, that board had no authority to decide whether Councilman Frazier was on the, uh, he, he had no authority. That's why your attorney took you in there and advised you of that. And they all, the ones that were proper voted and said, there, I think there were two of them said, we don't have the authority. Every person on that board that, said, that voted on that was out of, a, didn't have the authority to do that. And city code so th says otherwise. That's why it went the way it did. No, he, the city, the lawyer found a small phrase at the, uh, months later to justify it because I challenged him on it, and he said, I, I saw the language too. You were to appeal, you lost, you lost at the Ethics Commission, and you used city resources to try to knock a rival out of the election 10 days before the election. That was unethical, and the loophole there needs to be closed up. But I would be glad to give you the exact details of it. Why, why did you say the city did that? Well, the town city attorney offered the staff time. That's the city attorney's job. Well, it did cost town money to harass me when I was on the It process. wasn't harassing you. You it's did not you follow promise. procedures. I certainly it did. Was brought, it was brought up by That's an why opponent. these ordinances are so troubling. Just Mr. listen Mayor. once, okay, without interrupting. <laughs> it, was brought up, it was brought up by an opponent of yours, and it's something that had Even to be looked into. The election. Now, when you say city attorney told me the proper venue is the circuit please, court. Please let somebody that's else say me. something once. Okay. Just okay. The, the facts are important. You're right, and that's what I'm trying to point out. The city is only following rules that had to be followed. And to, for you to stand up there and say city resources were used to support one of his opponents. He said it came in on a Friday, true. and he was trying to. Hey, that, let's, 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 let's end this discussion. I We're not getting anywhere. No. It, it's, it's, it's obviously, you're, you're, I mean, I, I don't, maybe you are a attorney. I don't know. But no, I'm just a citizen who can I don't, read, the, I don't, read the I don't know. We, we, we have to follow what our charter tells us to do. If there's a suggestion of impropriety, it has to be investigated to make sure there is or there isn't. Well, who would That's do that? All. Who would do that? Our attorney advises us in that regard well so I, that, I mean it has nothing to do with the city he the, didn't the, the ethics it. board is completely separate he agreed and uh, miss Fraser can testify to that too i think she was there that the proper venue was the circuit court and he went outside of that and then months well, later he I, came I, back I hear what you're saying but i don't know that's true that's your opinion that's what you're telling me but i have no way of knowing that's true yeah. you could be just up making that up i don't know Ms. Adelaide, are you here representing no cannabis and carol or just personally I'm sorry, that is personal. Okay. But, Jim, that's not... <laughs> I'm not representing no cannabis and Carol in that opinion. My yeah. argument is that she said the city resources were used oh, that's to right. support I mean, a candidate, that, that, and that's not it true. It was used for one true. candidate. It's not true. Yes, and actually, I came in that day with a position... Right. With that's a, enough. A I send this and I wasn't allowed to Please read take it your as seat. a citizen. Please take your seat. Is there anyone else have a uh, comment? Carl. On the docket items. <laughs> this will be much shorter and a whole lot less contentious. Do you have a story to read us? No, there's no story, <laughs> and I'm not going to read anything. Number one, I congratulate you tonight for some intelligence. Uh, you got the campaign financing thing passed. Beautiful. There's two more things yet to uh, take care of, and if we maintain some stability and sensibility, that'll get done too. The other thing I'd like to point out, if you want to read a story that was really a good one, read in today's Carroll County Times, the editorial page. A very good article that told it like it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Anyone else that care to make a comment? Hearing nothing, could I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Your second? Second. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. So carry. Thank you one and all. The purpose of that. The damage my complaint. Don't harass me. No, the purpose. That's the whole reason. The I'm sorry. The purpose of that complaint was to make sure you were leaving. It's called Man, don't get, get. God almighty. Oh, I know. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, I am so glad that campaign financing. Well, people can make